Coca-Cola wants to build a brand, or Tesla wants to build a brand, or United Airlines wants to build a brand, this comes naturally. A brand is, of course, what you stand for. It's a short description of who you are and what you're about and how your life experience and training has made you uniquely suited for the job you either are doing or the job that you want to hold. So yes, I think you need to build a brand. Martha Stewart has built a fabulous brand, which in spite of the fact that at one point she served time in jail, has never been worth more. Uh, you think about Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates. I mean, these are Steve Jobs particularly. These were all people who built a brand. It did not come naturally. Regis McKenna, the public a relations executive who actually made Steve Jobs will tell you that when Steve Jobs began his career, he could hardly give a speech, let alone to become the charismatic, effective speaker that he later was. This is a skill that could be learned. You build a brand, you know, and, and I think Jobs and his brand that he built at Apple about being different and being unconventional, which was true for him, true for the company, true for the products, I think was a brand that served him very well. If you're starting off in your career, how do you build a brand? Well, you get advice from other people, but the first thing you do is you try to write one or two or three sentences that describes who you are and not a resume. You know, you're, you, you are not just a resume about your set of education and experiences. Who are you? What do you stand for? I had a student in my class, an African-American position. He had not saw talk much during the class, but in the class on brand building, we randomly called on him and he said, you know, he said, I'm a, I'm a black physician. I came from a very poor part of a very disadvantaged city. I'm getting my MBA. I've already gotten my MD and my career is going to be focused on improving the health of these underserved minorities. And there's a brand. It's a brand that connects to his life experience as a black man. It's a brand that connects to his education as both a doctor and an MBA. And it, and it connects him in a way that says, I am somebody who's serious about trying to fix the problems of the inequities in healthcare, particularly for minority communities. Simple, connects with him, connects with who he is, connects with his skills, provides a brand that people then relate it to him for the whole rest of the class in a very different way. And does that change the way that you describe your personal brand as you become more experienced in your career or at a senior position? How would the same person describe himself or herself differently? I'm not sure that they ever do. I mean, my friend Keith Ferrazzi, who wrote the book Never Eat Alone, or John Levy, who wrote the book uh, You're Invited, which is a fabulous book, which I highly recommend. I think they see themselves as basically people who connect other people and who build useful connections. And I don't think mm -hmm. that's changed as they've gotten more successful. I don't think Elon Musk's brand as a you know technological visionary and an unconventional thinker changes. If you've got a brand that really represents who you are, that is not probably going to change very much. To what extent is this personal brand something which is entirely 100% accurately descriptive of you and how much of that is, uh, you know, showmanship and put on and just sort of attention seeking behavior. It's the same thing is for a company. You know, every organization claims, you know, every airline claims that they're the best airline. I don't think that is, can possibly be true. So obviously you want to emphasize the more positive aspects, but you also want to emphasize aspects of your persona that are consistent with fundamentally who you are and make sense of who you are. I think a little embellishment is fine. Too much probably gets you into trouble. Mm -hmm.